Hey there internet friends, it's Dan again. Um, I'm going to do a video here on uh, using my Color Monkey Display colorimeter to calibrate a Sony PVM CRT. Um, the values I'm, I'm choosing in all these menus here, I'm whizzing through a little bit faster in this video, but that's because I have a, a previous video that explains what all these do um, and why you choose them. So if you, if you want to know uh, what they mean, I recommend going and watching that video. I'll put a link uh, down below in the description, but I'm just um, I'm setting all my values here and, and choosing the right monitor. Um, so I've got my my laptop set up off to the right. I've got my uh, PVM to the left, and I've got my Color Monkey display hooked up to the laptop. Uh, laptop outs outputs um, HDMI into an RGB converter, and then into the uh, PVM. Um, and then the first thing I do is I, I run an initial gray sweep. Um, so that first gray sweep, what it's doing is it's uh, sending out uh, colors uh, to the PVM and it starts at black and goes all the way through to white um, and across that uh, gray spectrum. And it's going to measure those values and it's going to give me uh, initial errors. Um, now normally I like to do this twice because uh, a lot of these algorithms are based on um, perceptive levels and, and the way the human eye and the human brain interprets color is very much relative to other colors. Um, so I run this sweep twice and you can see here, so this um, delta E row that appears there, um, you can see you can see the colors um, adjusting here as we go through this, this uh, gray range as it's taking new values and comparing them to old values. But you can see this delta E row um, as we discussed in previous videos, we want that delta E to be 2.0 or lower. Um, and we've got a few columns there that are pretty close. Again, you see all these values jump around as the as it runs up the scale, and that's to do with the relative nature of it. Each value affects the the value before it. So I've done my uh, gray range, and I'm just taking a quick look at my graphs here. Um, so this is my luminance response, and you see that curve there, and it, you see that colors start to drift out. At the higher end, my red, green, and blue should all be on top of each other there uh, if everything's nice and even. And it's not, it's quite spread out. And it's not terrible. Um, you know, by eye, this is, is probably a, a pretty well calibrated monitor. Um, but this is why we use um, these tools to see these values. That pink line down the bottom there was the, um, the delta E, which we want nice and low. So, yeah, we're not real happy with those values. Um, so we pick a value. I, I tend to. Uh, pick the 70 to 80% range and the 20 to 30% range to calibrate um, monitors, um, CRTs, especially that only have a two level um, calibration ability. Um, so with a Sony PVM, you've got your, um, your bias and your gain. So your bias are your darker colors uh, and your gain are your lighter colors. So I've chosen the 70% mark. I've hit a constant um, calibration. So that will just keep reading. The color monkey will continuously read. So I'm going into my uh, color temperature values here and I'm going to adjust the gain, um, the R, G and B values for the gain because I'm at that higher range and this uh, as, as I adjust these the monitor will uh, tend to change how the higher level um, color temperature works and you'll see as I'm changing it here every, every refresh every flicker that you see in the graph up the top there is the the um, color monkey taking another sample um, and you'll notice that delta E is slowly shrinking so I'm changing the values here. I'm changing my reds, green, and blue. So every time my value on the left uh, is not 100%, if it's lower than 100%, I'll try and boost it a little bit. If it's higher than 100%, I'll try and drop it down a little bit. So I'm just cycling through the colors. And what you'll notice is you'll see that delta E start to dramatically fall after a certain amount of time. So 2.0 is what we want. That's our, uh, our aim. Anything under 2.0 we consider pretty good. Um, and always good when you when you do these calibrations to let it sit for a couple of seconds. Don't don't go too crazy on your color values. It does take a little while for the meter to read. Um, so I always let it run over sort of two or three samples, maybe more if it's a darker color where you need a fair bit of information for the for the probe to pick it up. So yeah, just adjusting my red, green, and blue values there on the monitor, and we see that delta E come way, way, way down. So again, 2.0 is is um, 
the the limit of human perception for average people um there's probably a few um you know crazy folks out there who can see a lot more than that but for for normal folks like us uh 2.0 is what we want so getting it down nice and low is good now um we've only changed this one color all the other values are oh, you because of the menus come up you'll see that the constant reading error so that's just because the menus are interfering with the probe there so we just ignore that for now um but yeah we're only reading that one color um so um the the other colors around it we haven't reread so at some point we're going to have to do a full spectrum read again um and that will average out all the other colors and tell us how changing that 70 percent value has changed all the other values so this is me just being a little bit pedantic here um i'm getting this way down um and and you know it is fun you do get a little bit caught up in the moment um, trying to get these delta e's way down um, as i keep saying to everybody don't don't get too obsessive about it what you want is to get it under two um, you know if you had a, a crt across the board with 2.0 in every column um, that's a really good looking crt that you'll you'll notice a lot of the tones be a lot nicer uh, so again um, we'll do a full grayscale read always every time you adjust something on a monitor do a full grayscale read or if you're doing colors uh, reread your colors um, and what we'll notice is that even though we've changed the gain, which is the, um, the brighter colors, um, it affects everything across the, the full spectrum. Um, so everything sort of from the 50% mark upwards should probably get a lot better. Um, sometimes we do see values down the bottom end of the spectrum get worse. Um, sometimes they get better. Um, you know, it really depends on, on a lot, especially with these analog devices. Um, you know, small changes in electronics in one point can drastically change other things. So, so I grabbed the 70% before. 70, 80% is normally what I try and grab. Now I'm grabbing the 20%. Uh, again, sort of 20, 30 is what I gain. And now we're going to flip. We're going to go from gain to bias. So consider this a, a two-point um, color calibration. So if you've got a, a nice expensive OLED, um, particularly like an LG or a Sony or something that's pretty high end, um, you'll notice some of them have 10 and even 20 point calibrations these days, um, which is amazing. You can dial those colors in so, so wonderfully. Um, but on these, these older CRTs, really we just sort of have our highs and our lows, our gain and our bias. Um, so, you know, we try and pick some, some uh, levels um, that are going to best represent um, the sorts of colors that we expect to see. And again, you know, I'm calibrating this very much for um, for film and TV, really, um, is how, how this is being calibrated. But um, when we're playing games, especially games that have, uh, you know, um, a lot of skin tones in them and things like that, so if it's a, a, a newer system, like a, you're getting into your PlayStation 2s, PlayStation 3s and whatnot, that kind of era, um, you know, skies, uh, tree and foliage, that kind of thing can really sort of uh, benefit from this kind of stuff. But certainly on the older games, even though the palettes were limited, um, you know, I like to do this because I want to know what I'm looking at is what the designer intended. Um, so there's, there's an artistic appreciation for me when it comes to playing old games. Um, so again, you know, I'm, I'm trying to calibrate to get my display as accurate as what I am assuming the designer of the game had. Um, and I have spoken about this in previous videos as well. Um, you know, I'm calibrating to um, a 6500 Kelvin white point, and if you watch my color science video, the first one, um, it explains what that is. Um, there are other standards of white points. Um, 9300 was a standard for a while in uh, in Japanese broadcast. Um, well, it's very difficult to find that information written down anyway. It tends to be written in in um, manuals for for monitors broadcast monitors which is kind of interesting there's no sort of real documented standard on it and again that's why i i always calibrate to 709 um because it is a, a documented and written standard um however that's if you want to try and calibrate to a different color temperature you're more than welcome to um I, you know i don't impose my personal preferences on people i just try and share the technical side of it so again, I've changed my bias. I've got this nice and low delta E 0.5, 0.2. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, it bounces around a little bit. Um, it, it's, you know, every refresh is going to be slightly different, so the number does dance around a bit. But as always, you make a change, you do your grayscale sweep, always. Always, always, always. So once again, we go through our sweep, and we'll see all these numbers bounce around a bit. 
Now one thing it's really hard to do, it's really hard to get the distant ends of the spectrum bang on, um, and more so the, the dark end of the spectrum, because you're starting to get to a point where there's so few photons firing out that the slight differences can make a, a huge world of difference. Not only that, but we, we don't perceive dark colours as well as we perceive light colours. More photons help us see colour. Um, so for us, it's much more important to get those high ends working. So again, we had our gain working really well um, on our first calibration sweep. Uh, we changed a bias and it's dramatically affected our gain. Um, so this happens a lot. And this is calibrating can be a little bit of a, a painful experience. Um, when you first do it because you, you change something and you think you've done it well and then it kind of all goes to hell um, but uh, we can fix that so it's it's incremental fixes is the aim of the game um, you never get anything right the first go um, even the these days um, these super duper high end OLEDs have got um, automatic calibration in them you can you can stick a probe in them buy some very expensive software run the software and it'll self calibrate um, and that self calibration process can take sort of you know 20 minutes 40 minutes um, depending on on what level of sensitivity you set them to so even when the when the robots do our jobs for us that takes the robots a while um, so doing it by hand ourselves is pretty difficult sometimes um, you know, uh, there are also upper and lower limits of a monitor. You might have a monitor that's aging a bit. Um, you know, might need a cap kit, or um, you know, there's there's just something wrong with it, and it just can't hit a, p a particular color. Maybe it's um, the chassis and the and the board's not so great. Maybe it's the CR the tube itself, and the tube's burning out a bit, and you just can't get a certain luminance value out of it. Um, you know, CRTs are, are finicky things. So I've adjusted my gain again, my red, green, and blue on my gain. Another grey sweep now, and we'll we'll see how the whole level goes. Running through our shades. So we're getting pretty pretty good in the low end. Starting to jump up again, and again it's all a bit relative, so it's really hard to say now. You've got to wait till the end of it. All right, so all green across the board, which uh, I'm pretty happy with. Um, and uh, I go ahead and look at my um, my graphs. And now that's a much better curve, right? You see all those the red, green, and blue are smack bang on top of each other, which I'm pretty happy about. That's what I want. Uh, my gamma graph, like not so good at the end there, uh, dips off a bit, but you know, pretty pretty okay across the across the board from like the 30% mark onwards, which is really sort of where we start to notice uh, color differences. Um, and there's my grayscale, right? That's that's pretty good. Bit of a bump there. Oh, what can you do? But that uh, pink line down the bottom, that's my delta E, right? So um, you notice that the delta E is highest, the error is highest at that sort of wobbly bit there, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and my color temperature, bang on, well, not bang on, but pretty damn close, right? 6,500 Kelvin, uh, which is what we want. Uh, when it comes to greys anyway, we haven't looked at our, our colours yet, right? We're only doing grayscale in this video. Um, and then we see that tracking there across, which is what we expect. That's our, our grayscale of colour. And we're sitting pretty much that big yellow dot in the middle is bang on 6500, which we like. Now, problem with all of this, which I'll discover in a minute. I'm doing the voiceover to this after the fact. Um, once I get out of this uh, graph, yep, that's there it is. There's my measure, 6500 Kelvin. Good job, Dan. Uh, no, that's not what I want. I want to go to the measurements. There we go. Okay, now I noticed that the uh, the Y target, the Luma for my hundred, if you'll notice uh, that column there, is uh, it's quite low, right? See how it says uh, 60.3. So that's essentially um, what we call nits when we're measuring uh, high-end displays. It's way too low, uh, which I've only discovered at the end of all this. Um, really, you know, for for sort of casual viewing of a CRT in a, in a darkish room, you want your super bright whites um, to be at about 100 nits, um, maybe a bit lighter, maybe up to 120, 150 for a, a lighter room. So what I've done is I've, I've moved, done the contrast up. So remember, contrast are your light colors, and brightness is not actually the, the light colors, it's the dark colors. So my contrast has dramatically... Uh, um, made the the white levels higher now 
I do a grayscale test, of course, because you have to after you make any adjustment. And we'll notice um, what effect raising the contrast or brightness even has on color. So there's my sweep and we notice that my 50% marks out a bit. Um, so even though my contrast is nice and high, uh, 2.1, but you know what? Uh, it's not too bad. I'm probably, probably going to live with that. I can't remember what I did here. But still not too bad. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to go fix that. So I'm just going to try and get that delta E down a little bit. And again, anytime you change one value, it's going to uh, mess with the maths of everything else. So do your full sweep every time. Definitely don't leave that step out. full sweep done everything in the green that's what we like to see might quickly check our graphs at the end of this all right so not too bad grayscale is a little bit high in some of these values so we could probably bring that down a little bit but we're all under delta e20 so maybe the gamma's up a little bit high, but that's okay. Looking good. Right, so that's the uh, the first part, which we look at the grayscale. We get our color temperature right. Uh, I'm going to do some videos a little bit later on on tweaking the colors and making sure that the color saturation levels are right and the colors are in the right um, hue saturation levels. Uh, so I'll go into those in another video. Um, and then sort of finally putting it all together, looking at some test images that come with the suite um, that allow us to visually gauge uh, particularly uh, troublesome colors like skin tones um, across a wide variety of different uh, skin shades are, are things I like to um, make sure that my colors are right on um, as well as other things like natural elements, uh, water, uh, trees, foliage, that kind of thing. So anyway, I'll see you in the next video uh, and as always, if you uh, want to flame me, uh, please do so on Twitter. I'll talk to you there. Thanks, bye.